You're listening to the B&H Photography Podcast. For over 40 years, B&H has been the professional source for photography, video, audio, and more. For your favorite gear, news, and reviews, visit us at bnh.com or download the B&H app to your iPhone or Android device. Now here's your host, Alan Weitz. Greetings and welcome to the B&H Photography Podcast. This week's episode is about weddings, specifically niche wedding photography. Wedding photographers have come to realize that the wedding photography business is hyper-competitive, which means that finding a specific client base and a way to stand out from the crowd is crucial, almost necessary. If you can do so while incorporating your own identity and traditions into your field of work, you just might have the recipe for a successful career. Our first two guests we met at the 2019 Depth of Field Wedding and Portrait Conference hosted by B&H. Charmy Pena is a wedding and portrait photographer and a Nikon ambassador. She started her career photographing newborns but quickly fell in love with the joys and demands of wedding photography. She soon came to realize that nobody knew the traditions and expectations of Indian families better than herself, and she found a way to blend tradition with the wants of a new generation of Indian brides and grooms. The rest is history. Petronella Lugemwa is a New York-based international wedding photographer who has found her specialty in multicultural weddings. Born in Uganda, raised in Zimbabwe and Birmingham, Alabama, Petronella found that embracing her own multiculturalism enabled her to find the right path for her wedding photography. We're going to be speaking with Charmy and Petronella about their careers and some of the work that they've done. And we come back after a break. We're going to be speaking with portrait and wedding photographer Stephen Rosen. Here's Charmy. Okay, we are back at the 2019 Depth of Field Conference here at the Hotel New Yorker in Manhattan. And Crystal we are. Hmm? The Crystal Ballroom. The Crystal Ballroom, that's right, outside the Grand Ballroom. And we are being joined by Charmy Pena, okay, a Princeton based wedding photographer and a Nikon ambassador. We have have representatives of all the major companies here today. It's some pretty cool stuff. Um, so you've been taking weddings for how long now? 12 years. 12 years. Maybe what? 13. Oh, okay. Yeah. And what got you into shooting weddings? So uh, I was a good little Indian daughter once and okay. I double once? majored once <laughs> <laughs> in economics and information technology. I double majored and I looked for a job in that, and they were all cubicle jobs, and I couldn't. Wait, this is the same story everyone's giving us. They went into all these high. No, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. I couldn't do it. <laughs> uh, so I got married, and on, a, on my wedding day, my husband gave me a camera. He gave me a, a DSLR that I was intimidated by, and I shoved it in the back of my closet. But I, I guess my personality type doesn't lend itself to bonbons and stay-at-home wife. <laughs> and so I guess I was really annoying. And one day, my husband came home with... Uh, Brian Peterson's exposure book. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, and, and he's like, please get a hobby. You get a hobby. You're like really <laughs> annoying. Yeah. yeah, like you got to get a hobby. You're super annoying. I was bored to tears. And so I learned how to use it. And I don't know, I'm, I'm, we were like, I was sleeping with the camera under my pillow. It, it, it was an instant love relationship. So um, how did how'd you find yourself into doing weddings? What, what triggered you into that? To do weddings? Yeah. I actually said I was never going to do weddings because brides are crazy. Like I'm crazy. I was crazy. Like Bride I don't want to deal with people like me. <laughs> so uh, I said I was never going to do weddings, but I started doing babies and a friend of a friend saw a baby shoot I did and was like, called me and said, you're shooting my wedding. I was like, no, I'm not. I'm not <laughs> shooting your wedding. She's like, oh, come shoot my engagement photos at least. So I came, I went, I shot her engagement photos. I was so excited shooting the, those engagement photos. I went home, I edited them the same day and sent them to her. And she was like, there's no way you're not shooting my wedding. You're shooting my wedding. Was it the interaction between you and the people or were you just concentrating on capturing what was happening? There? What, what triggered you? So what got two, you? I, I, love, I love that relationship. I love like I, I like having fun with people. And so an engagement session, I'm just like having fun with two people and like enjoying their love okay. and like hearing about that. But two, I think that I've always liked having like a finished product and mm -hmm. being like, look what I made. I made this. And so being able to look at something and say, I made this, that there's like a fulfillment in that. Gotcha. And so I think that really, and, and I'm a bit of a people pleaser. And so being able to make something that I love making and love feeling like I made something and then having somebody else be really happy about it. That's like fulfilling all kinds of different needs that I have as just a human being. Right. Right. Yeah. Now, uh, your site, it's very, very, very ethnic oriented. Well, it's a, yeah, it's a niche. I definitely shoot almost 
almost exclusively Indian weddings. It's was not that on by purpose. choice or just happened that way? It's not on purpose. You know, we're all a product of the communities we mostly live sure. in. And yeah. we, we still do live in a, in very separated communities intentionally or unintentionally. So most of my family is Indian. Most of their friends are Indian. And, and so when people found out that I was shooting weddings, historically, it's been a lot of Indian uncles directly from India. And so that's one style. And I was shooting just in a, a different, more modern way. And so it's kind of the best of both worlds for Indian young people who are, whose parents are probably footing the bill. They want yeah, the traditional yeah, yeah, aspect yeah, yeah. as right? well as the, and so, the modern aspect. Right. They yeah. want to make sure that it's somebody who knows the traditions, who understands the traditions. And I do, because I live them. Um, you have to do it because, because again, we, this topic's come a few times today. You can't redo a wedding. No. It has to be done right. And you yeah. have to capture all the things that are happening yep. when they happen, because you don't get a second shot. No. And, and Indian weddings are so... The ceremony, there's so much detail in the ceremony and there's something happening every second. And if you for a, for a second think, oh, I got it, I'm going to take a break, you're screwed. So, so you, and you have to know that. You have to know what you're looking for because it can look repetitive and it's still not. Mm. And they'll know. Is that one thing that you would say is different from any Indian weddings, or at least from the photography side of it? You need to get more details than you yes, might otherwise? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. There's just yeah. so much, um, even even within the ceremony, there's so much detail okay. that you you really need to... You need to pay attention. And people want all those aspects oh, yeah. captured. Oh, yeah, 100%. Right. Can you talk about some of those specific customs? We could definitely sit here for 30 hours talking about this, <laughs> but I'll try and pick like three that are super quick. Um, we exchange garlands. That's okay. a big deal. Like that's that's the big kickoff of the ceremony is we exchange garlands. And the other thing is we, don't, we, do, we do rings now. And so a lot of people incorporate rings into the ceremony, but the real thing that most Indian cultures do and it can vary if you're South Indian, North Indian from Gujarat or Punjab. Um, we usually do a necklace. It's called a Mangal Sutra or a Thali if you're South Indian. Um, and the necklace is really the thing that's like the binding we're married now. Um, some South Indian cultures have rice throwing. So you literally throw rice at each other, the bride and the groom, and it's really fun and it's fun to shoot. Um, but you have to know what you're looking for. And in terms of lighting, almost all of these ceremonies are happening in ballrooms because that's the only space that can hold groups as large as, you know, Indian weddings Indian can Indian weddings be. are large. Oh, yeah, because my parents invited everyone they ever met, including, like, <laughs> the, the taxi driver who picked them up at JFK Airport that's upon great. their arrival. That's like, wonderful. everybody gets invited. He's actually a nice guy. He's great. <laughs> yeah. um, he's my godfather. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, <laughs> well, maybe... Your last name indicates there's another ethnicity going on in there, right? Oh, Patel uh, Pena. So uh -huh. my, my last name is actually Patel Pena. Uh, uh, my business name is Charmy Pena. And my husband's Puerto Rican. Puerto Rican. And have you incorporated uh, Puerto Rican weddings into your <laughs> workflow? I, uh, you know, I haven't gotten a ton, but I've done a lot of Indian and Latin weddings. A lot of, a lot of um, cross-cultural weddings these days. So I've done a decent amount of those. So I'm familiar with Jewish weddings, and they could be all over the place, too, because it's like, the, again, there's not one categorization. Yeah. How wide does it vary in India? Because India is a, is a monstrously sized... Oh. It's huge. Yeah. And there's got to be a well, lot of different cultures. cultural things yeah. now. So were you ever at a wedding where it was from the other side of India? Or, That's literally or? every wedding. So uh, <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> every, every single wedding uh, is... Every single region is different, but even within regions, like... I'm a Patel. I'm Gujarati, right? That's the state that I'm from in India is called Gujarat. And my last name is Patel. And there's like a lot of us, mm -hmm. a lot. You've got your own phone book. Like, your, is your doctor yeah. a Patel? Because I'm betting he is. <laughs> um, both my parents are doctors. Uh, I'm the brown sheep. Uh, but but, uh, but even within like Gujarati Patels, you could go from one wedding to the next and the traditions can be different. And so it's not only being ready for the traditions to be slightly different or even largely different, it's, it's about understanding the psychology of, of an Indian wedding. And the, the major thing you have to understand, and I think a lot of people who are, who are desperately trying to shoot an Indian wedding for their portfolio don't understand, and this can really mess them up if they really want to get into that market, is you have to understand that Indian weddings are about family. They're not about the couple. They're a little bit about the couple, but they're about their families. And so, you know, you have to... You have to like love on the uncle who brings his DSLR and his A1 
to the to the wedding. Like you have to show him some love as well because they will hate you and your pictures if everyone doesn't feel loved. And and it's it's about everybody at the wedding. And so as long as you respect that and and keep an eye on everyone who's important knowing that it's more than just the bride and groom, you're not you won't miss things. You just, there's a lot to be aware of. So you just always have to eyes open on every close relative and some distant relatives. Um, let me ask you a quick gear question. What, what is your basic setup? What are you carrying with you when you go to a wedding? Right now I'm shooting two D850s mm -hmm. uh, and a 35 on one and an 85 on the other. All prime. All I prime. have recently taken to really loving the 10514 mm -hmm. for portraits mm -hmm. um, and the 2818 for dance floor. Mm -hmm. Um, but for the last five years, I was just 35, 85. I wow. never change lenses in the entire day. <laughs> so you know your gear. So actually, and there's a lot to be said about that. I know what it's going to look like exactly. before I put it up to my yes. face. And uh, going into 2019, not gear-wise, but is there anything you want to incorporate uh, into your style? Uh, new things you want to try? Anything going on that way? So gear, but gear-wise, <laughs> I yeah. do. I want to. I want to bring C6s into the picture okay. because. I really love the EVF mm -hmm. and I find it, I find it kind of exciting to shoot with something that's giving me like accurate right. everything. WYSIWYG. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I'm always looking to like change up my lighting. I, I think that if you look at my website, you can tell that I'm, I'm big on lighting. Mm -hmm. I, I would definitely not call myself an ambient light shooter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> not, not who need, I am. We need two sides of this, uh, <laughs> this wedding <laughs> conference here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I'm not that one. Right, gotcha. um, I'm not light and airy mm -hmm. either. Mm -hmm. Unless the moment calls for it. If I happen to be in a light and airy setting, then my images will... But I think that I get stereotyped pretty closely to dark and moody. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's an interesting thing you say that because a lot of... Stormy. Um, Just like my the, soul. The, the, the <laughs> gowns and, and the garb that's worn at Indian weddings... It's the detail and color yeah. and everything, and it almost be, has to be moody because yeah. it's the opposite of a white backdrop. Exactly. You, there's, there's, I think that my brides are spending a boatload of money on their clothing, their jewelry, their their decor, and I, I think that I need to capture every single detail, and, and that lends itself, I think, to a more moody, dramatic... It's a visual treat, too. I mean, it's yeah. like no matter where you aim your lens at, at, at an Indian wedding, I guess you, you have to grab something good. There's a lot of color. Trust me, you can get it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. But yes, it is it it is an embarrassment of great things to capture. And so I feel like it's my duty to get it right. Like right. The, these people invested a lot of money in having this beautiful, opulent wedding, and I need to deliver photos that give you that beautiful, opulent feeling. Mm. So do you I, shoot know, solo, I know that or do you have an assistant usually? I always have a second shooter. Okay. All right. Yeah. I know that Indian weddings are really big on tradition and yeah. stuff like that. Has anybody made the entrance on an elephant? Um, I haven't had an elephant yet because the East Coast is notoriously terrible about elephant permits. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for my own wedding, I found an elephant. I found a guy. <laughs> really? And then my town would not allow me to bring the elephant. They told me they'd arrest me on site. Our, fr I our friends did a horse instead. Yeah. So we almost all of my weddings have a horse. Some of them lately have had... Maseratis and Lamborghinis and, and fancy. Well, there are dancing horses on Ferraris, so it's, there you go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah, we've had a lot of Ferraris lately. So if, if they can't do a horse, even if they can, sometimes we've been doing expensive cars. Sometimes there's a horse and buggy. Uh, but yeah, so no So it just has to be yet. an elaborate form of transportation. Is that really what it is? You know, is? They, they, it's, it's symbolic, right? Usually in India, the wedding was in the bride's village. Right. And so the groom and his entire family, it's called a Bharat usually, and it's, symbolic of them leaving their village and making the journey to her village to come participate in the wedding. Gotcha. And That's so we still do it because it's fun. Yeah. yeah. And we yeah. like to have fun. The, the, the other thing about Indian weddings is they do not take themselves that seriously. We like to have, there are games during the wedding. Like there are the shoes. Have you guys know about the shoes? No. The bride's family, as soon as, so you're not allowed to wear shoes on the altar. Right. Ever. Um, we have an altar. It's called the Mundup. It's very similar to a huppa. Um, and within the four pillars, you can't wear shoes. Okay. So your shoes have to come off before you get up. The shoes, as soon as they come off, the bride's family steals the groom's shoes. And when he tries to get off the stage, they require payment to return them. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. Awesome. So they don't, uh, they don't, 
and sometimes that payment can be in the thousands of dollars. Mm. And it's gotten much more expensive since Venmo was created because back in the day, you had as much money as you brought to the wedding. And now everyone's like, I know you have Venmo. <laughs> like, like this, just, right? just send me the money. <laughs> um, but throughout the ceremony, there's, there's just games, there's content. It's just fun. And cool. yeah. Let's end it on that. And All right. Chwami, right that's terrific. Um, Thank you so much for joining us. If people want to see more of your work and, and your website is terrific, where should they go? Uh, www.charmipena.com. C-H-A-R-M-I-P-E-N-A. -E Same for Instagram, Charmy Pena. Gotcha. Okay. And it's worth your while to stop by. It's, it's great work. Charmy, thank you so much for joining Thanks us Thanks for today. having me. This is fun. Thanks a lot. Good. Cool. Thanks right. a lot. Okay, we are back and we're sitting with Petronella Lugemois. Lug yes, you nailed Lug it. Lugemois. Lugemois, Lug yes. Lugemois. Now I okay. got it 100%. <laughs> I'm learning a lot of names the past few days. Let me I'm tell you. I'm sure you are, so, yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, you specialize in multicultural, inter interfaith, intercultural. Yes. Anything out of the norm. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, how did you find yourself getting into this niche within a niche? That's a great, great question. So um, I'm multicultural myself. I was born in Uganda, have grown up all over the world, Zimbabwe, all these different places. Um, and so I came to the United States and it was a culture shock. I felt myself struggling to celebrate my heritage, mm -hmm. who I was, trying to fit in. And I didn't even tell people who I was until someone called me out. And I was like, oh my gosh. They were like, we didn't know there was this other side to you, Ugandan and all of this. And so I thought about that and I realized that there are a lot of people, I started talking to a bunch of people and they, they all had the same experience. And I was like, wait a minute, I wanna help these couples celebrate who they are on their wedding day. Cause the wedding day, right? Two families coming together, two different cultures. And, and weddings and are crazy enough as exactly. even under the, under the best circumstances, <laughs> weddings push us all to the limits. Exactly. And then okay. you throw in two cultures. Sometimes okay. they're multi-day, different outfits. It could be toxic. Food. It's lots going on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So what, what are some of the more interesting complications you've encountered? Again, basically, mm. we're talking about two people in love, but getting married. That's the basis of the whole thing. Absolutely. But then we yeah. got all this other Michigas getting mixed <laughs> in. So what would be some of the strangest things you ran into as far as, like, you were there and all of a sudden something happened where, wait, we didn't anticipate this, but it was due to two different cultural things or ceremonial things, anything come to mind that would yeah, just be like let me really think stand about out? That. So I am Ugandan and I'm, we have a special engagement ceremony called a Kwanjula. Okay. And it's when a couple gets officially engaged and you have two families on different sides coming together and sort of negotiating who is this guy and is he worthy of entering into the family? So it's a whole like He's eight hour process. He's never worthy of entering the family. <laughs> we know that. Okay. All right. I know, right? <laughs> So, um, so going into this, I, sh I shot my first one and I was kind of like, oh, I'm so excited. I know what this is. I know the language is going to be easy, right? The other layer of it is they were Muslim, right? Uh-huh. Um, and my country is also already patriarchal, meaning, you know, women are, um, it's, yeah, mostly yeah, know, it's yeah. all about the guys, right? Uh, and yeah. so here's a female photographer coming in, shooting, and then you throw on the layer of Muslim. So um, what I didn't anticipate in the, the and this was early in my career is I hadn't really studied what a Muslim Kwanjala Sirma would be like so there were things like when everyone was bowing down like everyone took off their shoes and I was running around with my shoes like let me get the shot then I was like wait wait no one has their shoes on and then a couple of guys saw me you're not supposed to cross I didn't know you're not supposed to cross in front as uh -huh. a woman and I was like doing and I just yeah, quickly learning on the fly, but now, that's... <laughs> you're not supposed to do it as a woman, but then again, you were also working there. That, yeah, so I, I had to be, be able creative. To separate yeah, that. yeah. So I was like, okay, I want to respect and, oh, you know, like it's going but on. I still but have I have a job to do. Exactly. And how do I do that? So, yeah. No, it's interesting you mentioned it because yesterday we were talking with a uh, 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 Charmy Pena. Uh -huh. And she has a similar thing. She specializes in mostly in Indian weddings, mm -hmm. but there's no, there's no such thing as an Indian wedding because if your if your family grew up 
you know, three blocks away from the other family, they have different cultures altogether. Exactly. It's all over the place. Ex- different and spectrums. She, yeah, yeah. And she mm-hmm. has to do different things. Like, when exactly does the elephant carrying the groom yeah, and come exactly. in? And are they going to actually do that or are they going to decide we're too modern for that? We just want to do this part of the ceremony. Well, actually, they do, they do modern. They do come in Ferraris because apparently in the East Coast, elephants are hard to get a hold of. No joke. <laughs> yeah. We, we probe this. I've seen. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes. So, so you mentioned that sometimes you'll do a wedding where there's two completely different cultures getting married. Mm-hmm. And they're often two ceremonies or separate ceremonies or are they often normally just or they a hybrid. Way to That's a great, yes. Everyone does something different. Mm -hmm. So I have learned to really talk to my couples about who are you? How much of your culture and heritage are you bringing to your ceremony? Because some people will do it. We just did one at the end of December where they did everything in one day and it was like outfit changes and everything which really should happen over a couple different days. And they just were like, we're just going to do it all 8 a.m. until like, when was it? 1 a.m. or something. It was just like a whole day thing. So... So you really have to do your homework up front. You can't just walk in there cold saying it's a wedding. No, no, that can't yeah, happen yeah. with you. <laughs> you will totally I mean, it fall. Shouldn't and happen like, anyway, even yeah. the best. But here, it really, because there there are so many fine things that you probably can't even anticipate. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like passing of the cola nuts. Um, I think it's an Ethiopian wedding. Like when the guy gives the rose to the girl as part of his entourage as he's approaching, that's the key moment, not like the exchanging of the rings. Right. If that yeah. makes sense. So yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, knowing yeah. those small things or passing, yeah, yeah. Well, I know at the end of each episode, when Jason passes the roses to me, that is the symbolic part. <laughs> Most part, yeah. Usually we do it <laughs> up front, but no, we do it at the end. It's just, you know. <laughs> it's very beautiful, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, obviously you're doing multicultural weddings, but these are all people getting married here in the States. I assume most of them yeah, are here. Yeah, most of them, most so of them, yeah. you really have, in some cases, at least three cultures kind of smashing together. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And do some of the, the cultures that shy away from photography in that sense, and they don't really want a lot of photos, and, and you have to kind of dial yourself back at times, or not really? It's funny. Every culture... No, actually, no. I actually yeah. feel like it's opposite. Maybe yeah. non-multicultural, maybe a little bit more, yeah. but... At least the culture weddings I did, they love photos yeah. and, and they express sometimes the families expect a specific type of fa- photo. Like right. the family formals are the thing and not like the creative like mm-hmm. shot. That's mm-hmm. not the thing. Mm-hmm. So And what did you do prior? I mean, did you, was was photography first and then you found the niche or you said, you know, I'm comfortable in this world and I can make a living at it and I like photography and I'm going to go for it? Yeah, no, no, great question. I'm a little weird. I'm very nerdy and geeky. Mm -hmm. Um, I have an engineering background and a business degree. And so um, that's sort of my background. I worked in consumer packaged goods. So think Advil, Pepsi, Avon, that kind of stuff. Um, So this is a natural progression. I don't listen. (laughs) My parents for a long time were like, um, how's that hobby coming along? Yeah, Are you yeah, using right. your engineering degree? And Have you spoken to yeah. that doctor we mentioned? <laughs> yeah, that's yes. like charming no, also. For real, like for a, real. For real, okay. Yes. <laughs> but, uh, but so how did you get to the wedding then? How did you get to the wedding photography? How did oh, that, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I was working at a corporate company uh, mm-hmm. and one of my coworkers get, was getting married in Mexico and she had seen that I dabbled in photography here and there and kind of was like, hey, we know each other. Can you come out and shoot our wedding in Mexico? And I was like, are you sure? I have never done this before. Like, and she was like, come do it. And so I ran and I studied in three months. I took workshops and I went out and shot her wedding and was like, I love this. I really love this. And so I began slowly building my business and figuring out, okay, how can I do this full time? And then um, my company merged with a bigger company And I was part of the layoffs. And I was like, you know what? I did not like that feeling. Let's see how we can make this side thing something. Opportunity time. Exactly. Sometimes you need that little push. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) I never would have done it because, you know, the people. Yeah, walking away, I know. (laughs) Yeah. And the idea of doing the multicultural aspect of it came eventually? Or you're like, you know what? I know I can find this market and make it work? No, that's a great question. So because I have lived around the world, 11 different cities worldwide, mm-hmm. I have this natural affinity to multicultural sure, couples. And I didn't them. realize that, but sense. everyone who reached out to me would always be like, hey, and guess what? My girlfriend is El Salvadorian right. or da, da, da. And I just was like, okay, I didn't really, okay. Yeah. And then um, I believe in education and investing in mentoring. So I did a workshop in Atlanta with Todd and Jamie Reichman, mm-hmm. and they were all about branding and 
they actually called me out on my last name and said, hey, we noticed you're hiding this part of yourself. What, it be, what if it becomes like the key part of your business? And so they literally, I left with the tagline, I believe your cultural heritage is beautiful. Mm-hmm. And they were like, push it out there and see what happens. And it's stuck. you know, you try and you're like, oh my God. Cause everyone was like, oh, that sounds very non-exclusive. Mm-hmm. Ooh, mm-hmm. so niche. Are you gonna, is it going to work? You know? So yeah. people talk about good, what are takeaways story. from when you come to a conference like this. That's a perfect example of exactly. what you come away with. It, sometimes you got to hear it from other people, something that could be very obvious that you're just so close to you can't see it. Exactly, exactly. It's hard that's to see it. your own nose. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly. really what it boils down to. Exactly. So that was a... a, a yeah. Well worth time. Yeah. It's also yeah. great for this area of the country, too, right? Because totally. it's so multicultural. Oh, oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. New York is the place. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. When you said Atlanta, I said, okay, maybe it's, of course it is everywhere. But here, every couple seems to be, you know, from one group. Exactly. If you yeah. ask questions, yeah. you'll really, totally. yeah. So I'm assuming you won't turn down a wedding if it's... Uh, Jane and, uh, and no, Joe Smith. No, 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 from, no, 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 no. I actually have lots of, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 As yeah. long as they understand and support my, sure. what I do. We, yeah, I, yeah, we actually, my assistant's right here, but uh, <laughs> my awesome, fabulous Khadija oh, hey is here. Um, good job. Yeah, we did a couple last year, yeah. 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 And, and I love them. We embrace them. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Of course. So if, if, um, if people would like to see more of your work, Websites, Instagram, where should they go? Go to Instagram and then the website. So Instagram is Instagram <laughs> Petronella Photography. Okay. And it, it, it should yeah. come up immediately. Yeah. P-E-T-R-O-N-E-L-L-A right. Photography. Okay. And the website is something you update only occasionally. So you, Instagram is becoming more your website? Or Instagram or? is like... Right, like right now we're recording what I'm sure. doing and like, yeah, that's yeah. what, if you want to be on the pulse of what's going on and then the website is, okay, I saw what she does, I saw who she is and what the studio is about right. and then let's go to the website and then, A deeper you know, yeah. 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 Cool. Right. Wonderful. Okay. Yeah. Pleasure. Petronella, thank you so much for joining us. Great thank talking you guys. with you. You too. Okay. We hope you're enjoying this edition of the B&H Photography Podcast. Send us a tweet at BH Photo Video, hashtag BH Photo Podcast. Stephen Rosen, who is part of our What is Photography series on the B&H Explorer website, has built his career creating gorgeous portraits and wedding photographs. While his portrait work stands out for its impeccable lighting and wardrobe, his wedding photography is the staple of his business. He photographs all sorts of weddings, but when New York State became one of the first states to legalize same-sex marriages, he was ready and a niche wedding photography business was formed. Let's listen in on our chat with Stephen. Okay, we are with Steve Rosen, a wedding and portrait photographer. Um, and you just mentioned that you earn your living shooting weddings, yes, but that's right. then you pursue portraits. Well, Go ahead, tell us about that. <laughs> To fulfill, how do you, you describe it? I said to fulfill my soul. There you so, go. All right. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I go around to all of these events in New York City where people like to get dressed up. Okay. Uh, in vintage clothes, the Easter Bonnet Competition, uh, Jazz Age Lawn Party, which is all sort of Jazz Age, Gatsby era kind of uh, And that's outfits. on Governor's Island? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, okay. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. So I've been doing those for... Over 10 years now. What I, what I find fascinating about that jazz age thing they have at yeah, Governor's yeah. Island, okay? They always seem to schedule it on what's probably the hottest, most humid day of the year. <laughs> have you noticed? Well, there's <laughs> there's a, a weekend in June and a weekend in August every year. Okay. So there are four days. Ah. Right? Um, and and they do hit a, a hot day at least one of those days. Because the last it's the few of the I've been looking at the, and I'm saying, I'm so happy I was not there today. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> well, the the big issue for me is that it's a uh, high season for weddings and it's on weekends. Ah, uh, so you okay. know there are four days, and I can usually manage to do one or two. So, what do you do? Do you feed your stomach or feed your soul when you have to make that kind of decision? You know, <laughs> oh, I'm doing a wedding, or am no, I doing the man, fun stuff? If I <laughs> have a wedding, I'm going to do the wedding. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you know, but um, I. I have yet to have a year where I have four weddings all landing on those four days. So I can usually squeeze in at least one, if not two days. And, and you know, the thing about doing the uh, the portraits is that it informs the work I do at my weddings. Uh-huh, uh-huh, and it uh-huh. makes me a better photographer for brides. 
and and vice versa because you know it, it all sort of feeds off of itself. All right, 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 it's, right. it's not that dissimilar, really, no, it's not. because I mean, yeah, you're working with people who are really dressed up, right. who are you know. I, I like to think of it as authenticity through artifice. Mm -hmm. So they're showing themselves off. Yeah. They're there to yeah. show themselves off. They're dressed Everybody up. Everybody is in they a want role. To be you, well. you yeah, they're playing yeah. a role, and that yeah. role might be closer to who they are inside than mm -hmm. what they have to wear on a day to day basis. <laughs> yeah. A lot of these people that I photograph really live to dress up, you know, and to express themselves that way. And I love their phenomenal uh, subjects, I love working with them. And, and I'm very known in that community now, so they all get excited when I come around because they know they're going to get a good portrait out of it. Um, and, and brides are the same thing. I mean, you know, nobody goes to Prestides in a wedding gown. Although Can that I speak would, for yourself. That, okay. <laughs> Can I take a picture of you at Christie's in your wedding gown? Absolutely. <laughs> um, Trader Joe's, but that's all right. <laughs> Actually, that would make a really awesome shoot. Doesn't have, to, doesn't have to be a guy in a wedding gown. Not that I would have any problem with right, that. But, right, you know, right, doing a, a, an engagement session at Christie's well, would be ask, kind I of mean, cool. Because you mentioned you, you shoot same-sex weddings. So yeah, have yeah. you ever had a male bride or a male man dress in a bride's dress? Uh, no, okay. I have had um, uh, two brides. I've had two brides, but I've had uh, numerous drag queens in other uh, situations. So the uh, the best uh, the the bridesmaids uh, uh, or the groomsmaids, I believe they call themselves, were all drag queens at one wedding, which was super awesome. I can imagine. Um, <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah. And uh, and the pictures are just amazing. And you had so you had the groomsmaids, and then you have the groomsmen who were all the brothers of the of the two grooms, right? And the groom's maids are drag queens who are like seven, eight feet tall. Right. So they're towering <laughs> over, over the, the, groom, the actual groomsmen who are all straight dudes, yeah. right? And they're 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 having fun with it, but they're just a little confused by sure. what's happening. Sure. So it, <laughs> it made for it made for some really terrific images. And it are was you great. pretty much based in New York? Or yeah, do you I'm in Brooklyn. You're in Brooklyn. Okay. I'm in Brooklyn. But if, right. if somebody wants to hire me to fly to Venice to do their wedding there, I will manage somehow. Yeah, you figure it out. Yeah, and that's cool. And uh, how did you fall into this? It's a niche, I guess you'd say. Uh huh. For if you're doing same-sex marriages. Did, was that just coincidental? Someone said, we'd like to do it, and you said, why not? Give it a shot. Well, I'm gay myself. Okay. And it, this all goes way back, actually. My first husband, went, he passed away from uh, HIV. Right. And uh, after he died, I was not recognized as his husband. Right? Uh, I heard. And, okay. and, you know, I went to pick up his ashes, and uh, they would not put my name down on the death certificate and they didn't have my name down to pick up the ashes as his husband. And that was the law at the time, you know, right? right? So that was painful, but I knew I had to change the law for something like that. But the real kick, kicker for me was when his uh, obituary came out in his hometown in Peoria and, and they just not excised me from the, the obituary. Like I didn't you even neutralized. exist. And I had cared for him. I was his. I was the guy who was there for him for the last years of his life. But you didn't fit into the template. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And that was just. There was no law that said they had to do that. That was just pure up hatred. Sure. And 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 so I, was I got. Up in. <laughs> so, I got involved after that in marriage quality, because I felt it was you know that experience made me realize how important it was to have the benefits of of an actual marriage. Mm -hmm. So I had been working, and this was early on in my career as a photographer. I was just sort of exploring photography at that point. And I learned a lot about photography from photographing the protests and the galas and the parties uh, and the fundraisers for Marriage Equality New York, which later became Marriage Equality USA. And, um, and, and through that experience, I actually ended up with a, uh, a collection of, of good uh, quality images of couples, same-sex couples. They were at parties and things or, you know, lying around in the park and, mm -hmm. and, and having fun, just being lovely and... Just being people. People, right. Um, so when the law started to change, when we got it passed in New York State, and, and, and at that point people started flooding into New York State from all over the country to get married, and they were looking for a wedding photographer, I was like the only guy in New York who had relevant imagery in his portfolio. 
I was a wedding photographer. I had done a few straight weddings. I was just starting. I had done a few straight weddings, but I also had done a few same-sex weddings before they were even legal. And I had this, uh, all of these uh, images that I had uh, created from, from um, documenting the marriage equality movement. So I started booking like crazy. And, and that, those first couple of years, it was almost completely same-sex weddings. It, it wasn't, it was just like, you know, a, a wave, you know, being at the right place at the right time, I suppose, um, and being prepared, right? Now, now everybody, most everybody has same-sex couples in their portfolio. And uh, so there's, you know, for me, there's more competition. Uh, but I still do a lot Here's of Here's a question for you. Is the challenge of photographing a same-sex marriage different from a, a heterosexual marriage? I mean, as far as what you have to do, the shot list, how you're going to be lighting things, uh -huh. how you're going to approach it. Yes. Is there a difference? Yeah, yeah, there Tell is. Us. Well, there's, I have a whole webinar on this that goes on for hours, so I can't really put it down in just a, a, a few brief words. But um, a lot, when I talk to other photographers, you know, generally they say, well, I would treat a same-sex couple the exact same way I would treat a, a straight couple. I mean, love is love, and I just want to show the love. And, and I think that's a really, really beautiful sentiment, and it's completely wrong. <laughs> okay, continue. Um, so everything from the very beginning, trying to reach out to your couples, it, uh, all the way through to delivery of product, it has variations. Sure, both of the couples are in love, you know, and love is love, but just a couple of things, like when you are trying to reach out to same-sex couples, you have to be careful that your uh, website and your advertising are, is all gender-neutral language. You have to sort of get ah, rid of words like yes. bride and groom. You have to get rid of uh, the talking about the dress because you, have, you can't assume there's going to be a dress, right? If you have two guys, there's most probably not going to be a dress, right? You have to, uh, of course, the big problem with getting rid of the word bride is uh, when the search engines are searching your site, they, your, your straight couples are going to need to have the word bride in there. So I always say uh, we, um, uh, we welcome all couples Brides and brides, brides and grooms, and grooms and grooms. That way I get the word bride in there three times. <laughs> ah, <okay. laughs> so you have to sort of work around that. But, you know, you, you, you talk about your, your uh, beloved or, you know, uh, and you don't talk about bride and groom. You talk about the couple Spouse. and things like that. I hate that word. <laughs> Sp spouse is too legal or partner that's the other one it's like I'm not in a law firm so uh, but uh, but you know I know people that are dealing with this very subject right now so it's interesting to hear your take on it right right so you know that's one of the things sort of when you're gearing up to try to make sure that you are same sex friendly on, on your uh, on your website and in your advertising and things like that the, the, the talk that I give is called the dreaded two headed tuxedo <laughs> <laughs> and the dreaded two-headed tuxedo is when you have two guys who are in black tuxedos who are in an embrace, and especially if they're backlit, right. uh, you know, if you're not lighting them properly, those tuxedos blend together and it looks like a big tuxedo with two heads. And so there's a lot of side lighting involved, you know, to make sure the edges of the different, uh, the, the two tux jackets separate out from each other so that it doesn't all blend together. Um, so that's a lighting difference right there. Okay. And, and the other thing that, you know, one of the big things you have to think about is that we live in a, in a patriarchy, right? Uh -huh. For better or worse, I, I personally think for worse, but we live in a patriarchy, right? And so the traditions in every society tend to uh, reflect that, the patriarchy in this yeah. case, yeah. Yeah. right? And, and, and nothing has more traditions in it than, than weddings. And so... Most wedding photography is about making the bride look small and beautiful and, and gazing up at her big, strong uh, uh, groom. And the groom is supposed to be big and strong and protective. And, and it sort of feeds into a lot of these sort of patriarchal ideas of what masculinity and femininity are. You have to throw all that out the window when you're dealing with same-sex couples. Mm. Okay. You're dealing with a lot of gender fluidity with the couples. Sometimes one of them might be more passive. Sometimes the other one might be more passive. Sometimes they're both really strong, and you need to be able to take advantage of that. And there are things that two guys do together that a man and a woman don't do together. For instance, um, especially when you have uh, a bride with an updo, 
<laughs> the, the, the bride might run her hands through his hair or, you know, the back of his neck. The, the groom will not touch the bride's hair. <laughs> You know, that's not right. not yeah. happening, right? <laughs> but when you have two guys, a lot of times, uh, you know, gay men, when they embrace, will grab the back of each other's heads or the scruff of the neck. And I will guide them into that sort of a pose because that's something that tends to be more natural for, for men to do with each other. And when you have uh, a lesbian couple, again, the updos. They do, do not go anywhere near each other's hair, which is unfortunate because, you know, it would be mm-hmm. nice. But, and the other thing with, uh, with, with lesbian couples is that, you know, I, in, in my experience, not every couple is the same, but um, I have found that they like to, like, place their hands on each other's upper chest, which, you know, straight men, or rather gay men will do that and it looks great. But it's a little, like, gropey looking in yeah, the pictures yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. and so you have to sort of guide those hands into other places when you're dealing with uh, a lesbian couple uh, who are embracing so um so uh, there are some, a lot of subtleties and there I'm are a lot of subtleties yeah, 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 yeah. yeah thought about all of this sure, absolutely. right and yeah. then uh, when you're dealing with um uh like in the in, in your product delivery uh Straight couples will are much more likely to get like great big canvases to put on the wall to present to everybody. If you're dealing with a gay couple who is in a not as friendly environment, mm-hmm. if they're coming in from you know a, a really conservative part of the country or a, another country that's really conservative, they're not likely to display pictures of their wedding. So there's much more of an emphasis on albums and things that they can pull out and show to people. Ah, wow. What about ideas of family? Because, you know, and think times are changing, but I imagine that, you know, in many same-sex weddings, the emphasis may be on friends uh, who are a guest as opposed to grandma and grandpa and things like that. Uh, well, one thing that crops up a lot is uh, you'll have one half of the couple whose family is welcoming and one half whose uh, family is not. So right. I've done lots of group shots where there's like, you know, one groom's only other gay cousin and then 80 people on the other side. <laughs> so, you yeah. know, you have to discuss these things with your couples in advance course, to just yeah. try to come up with a solution as to how, you know, uh, they want to deal with something along those lines. That sort of thing bleeds into stuff like the, the um, parents dance. You know, if there's only one parent uh, who's there mm-hmm. and the other parents are, are boycotting. I, I had uh, one... Yeah. I had one wedding that was, uh, it was a similar situation where one of the grooms, uh, his family just was not supportive and, th- and there was like nobody there. He had some friends there, but he didn't have family there. And the other uh, groom, his, his family was quite supportive. Um, his dad the, the, had just had open heart surgery like a month before and was very frail and, and couldn't really move around too much, but it was important for him to be there. So um, they did the, they decided to do the parents dance with the groom with his mother and the other groom was going to sit the parents dance out. But it was important to the groom whose mother was there, it was important to his mother really that they have the parents dance. So, so they did the parents dance and then she motioned, uh, she motioned to the other groom to come and join them in the dance. Mm. So the three of them started dancing together. I'm going to get all the clamped. Yeah. Be- <laughs> <laughs> and then, then the father, who could barely move, got out of his chair and joined them. And uh, all four of them. Gorgeous. I am getting yeah, all the yeah, so, That's great. Anyway, that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, it's wonderful. Wow. He really is tearing up. <laughs> yeah. you, are, you are tearing up. You yeah. are. Yeah. It was a beautiful moment. It was a beautiful moment. Sounds like it. Yeah. You know, one of the interesting things I find when I do a lot of these weddings is that, you know, there are people who are there, you know, sort of against their will, right? Mm-hmm. There are people who are just not, it's like, I don't, I don't think this is right, but uh, it's family, so I'm going to be there and grit my teeth. And then you watch them evolve during the course of the, the wedding, and you see they can't deny the love that they're seeing. And you see them change. You see them evolve, and you see them learn acceptance like right before your eyes steve it's, it's great stories if people want to see more of your work where can they go to see your photographs all right well my website is steven spelled with a v so stevenrosenphotography.com uh-huh. 
Um, and uh, check out my Instagram. I, I, I gram a lot. Uh-huh. Uh, mm-hmm. And you can see both the portraits that I was talking about and, uh, yeah, and the way they work. Yeah, these, these. Um, and that's at Stephen Rosen Photo. Okay, Stephen Rosen, wonderful talking to you. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hey, it was my pleasure. Yeah. Very cool. Thanks again. All right, you're very welcome. Thank you, sir. That's a wrap of another show. Thank you to Charmy. Thank you very much to Petronella and to Steven. If you are not a subscriber to our podcast, why not head on over to Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and the B&H Explorer website and sign up. It's absolutely free. 150 episodes are already on file. If you've missed them, you can listen to them anytime you want. For now... On behalf of myself, John, and Jason, thank you so much for tuning in today.